Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Cyclone Amphan rips through Bay of Bengal, 23 deaths reported so far. Venezuela to send warships to escort Iranian fuel shipments over US threats. Murder of Brazilian teenager brings nationwide attention to violent racism of police. Migrant sanitation workers in Lebanon fall off strike after tentative deal with company. Ecuadorian mass movements call for national protest against Moreno's neoliberalism. We begin with an update on super cyclone Amphan, which has severely affected parts of Sri Lanka, eastern India and Bangladesh. It has also displaced hundreds of thousands of people in the region and ravaged the famed Sundarban Delta. The worst affected in terms of damage is the Bengal region straddling India and Bangladesh, with the Indian side witnessing the most casualties. Close to 2 million people in India, including in the city of Kolkata, were without electricity as power grids were blown up in the storm. Mobile and internet services were also down as the cyclone damaged several communication towers across the region. More than 4.2 million people were evacuated to safety by governments in both India and Bangladesh. Embankments in the Sundarban Delta were breached due to the impact of the cyclone. Officials from both India and Bangladesh have stated that it is still too early to accurately assess the debt toll or the damage to property as the hardest hit areas are still not accessible. Amphan is the fiercest tropical cyclone to hit the region in a century. Moving on to our next story, the Venezuelan government will be sending its armed forces to escort the incoming fuel tankers from Iran. The announcement was made by Foreign Minister Vladimir Padrino Lopez in light of possible aggressive measures from the United States. Senior officials in the Trump administration have stated that the US is considering the option of sending forces to prevent the shipment from reaching Venezuela. Iran has dispatched five super tankers carrying patrol to Venezuela earlier this month. The shipment is to alleviate the severe fuel shortages caused by US imposed sanctions. Despite being one of the largest producers of oil, Venezuela's refinement capabilities are severely restricted because of the confiscation of its foreign assets and refineries by the US and its allies. The tankers are expected to reach Venezuela by next week. The US has strongly opposed this transaction, but both Iran and Venezuela have been under unilateral sanctions imposed by the US. Many have speculated that the US could escalate conflict in the region. The US has significantly expanded its military presence in the Caribbean. This was done under, under the pretext of combating drug cartels, of which it accuses Venezuela of engaging in. Moving on to our next story from Brazil, a recent murder of a black teenager in Rio de Janeiro has brought nationwide attention to racist violence inflicted by the police. 14-year-old João Pedro Matos Pinto was killed during a joint operation by the Federal Police and Coordinator of Special Resources, or COR, on the afternoon of May 18th. João Pedro was hit in the stomach when he was playing in the yard of his house. After being shot, the adolescent was taken away in a helicopter by the civil police until the next morning, that is May 19th, the family was not provided with any information about his whereabouts, who then went on to report him as missing. According to the fire department, the body of the victim was left on Monday, May 18th, late afternoon, in the southern zone of Rio. On Tuesday, May 19th, in the morning, family members of João Pedro were in the office of the chief medical examiner and recognized his body. Moving on to Lebanon, close to 400 foreign migrant workers at the Lebanese waste management company Ramco temporarily called off their strike on Wednesday, May 20th. This was after the workers reached a tentative agreement with the company. Additionally, workers were also guaranteed a slight increase in their salaries. The deal was confirmed by the Bangladeshi embassy in Lebanon. Most of these workers hailed largely from Bangladesh and India. According to the workers, Ramco had begun cutting their wages more than a month ago. The company also started paying the workers in the heavily devalued and stressed local Lebanese pound instead of US dollars as stipulated in their work contracts. Ramco has in turn blamed the Lebanese government, its biggest customer, for the shift in currency. Ramco stated that they were forced to use Lebanese currency to pay wages after the government itself shifted to Lebanese pounds to make payments. Consequently, the workers began their strike last week with a picket outside the company's storage site in Beirut. Armored riot police were called in to violently break up the strike and disperse the protesters. After days of strike, the company eventually agreed to come to negotiate. Lebanon's houses 
Over 400,000 foreign workers, most of whom are low-income workers and manual laborers, rights groups have often complained of widespread exploitation of migrant workers in the country. Finally, several Ecuadorian social movements, indigenous groups and trade unions called for a day national mobilization on May 25th. The protest will be against the neoliberal policies decreed by President Lenin Moreno during the pandemic. The People's Front, the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador, the Unitary Front of Workers, among others, are the organizations that gave the call for this national mobilization. On May 19th, Moreno announced a new package of austerity measures aligned with the recommendations made by the International Monetary Fund last year. Among the measures imposed include the dissolution of 10 government-owned companies, withdrawal of fuel subsidies, a 25% salary reduction for public workers and a disinvestment of 1.3 billion US dollars in the public sector. Social movements claim that the liquidation of the companies would lead to a retrenchment of over 12,000 public sector jobs. The National Union of Educators and the Federation of University Students of Ecuador, which have been mobilizing against the budget cuts in education, also rejected these neoliberal measures. They are expected to join the national protest on May 25th. And this is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.